Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Val. Greg has the night off. The woman facing life in prison for the fentanyl overdose of her young son will have to wait to find out her sentence. That was supposed to happen this morning, but things in court took a quick turn. Georgia Pack is here to explain. Georgia. A jury last month found Whitney Ard guilty of the second degree murder of her son. He died two years ago after a third overdose on the powerful drug fentanyl. And today her lawyers asked for a new trial, a request the judge denied. We're out here living through hell. This is the true city of horrors. Passionate statements from Whitney Ard's family outside the courthouse today, claiming multiple organizations failed and are the ones at fault for the death of two-year-old Mitchell Robinson. Prosecutors say on three different occasions, the toddler found fentanyl inside his home and swallowed it. These signs say his blood is on your hands too. This is a sign to the state of Louisiana. Your inaction and your system failures ended his life. We can't put that all on an addict. I don't feel like the facts that the state presented, the evidence uh, coincide with the law at all. I did file a motion to recuse uh, Judge Hines and she heard it herself. There were a lot of issues uh, regarding that and I only feel like that this is happening to my client because she's a black woman. Ard's attorney Sandra James Page says this case was the first of its kind in Louisiana. Nobody really knew what fentanyl was. Um, at the time that this happened. Neither did the hospital, which is why I'm confused as to why that's not considered. They didn't have the test for it. They couldn't tell him. Nobody knew um, that he was overdosing except for the doctors. And when they reached out to DCFS, they didn't know what Narcan was to respond. After last month's trial, District Attorney Heller Moore told us the responsibility for the death is solely on the mother. When asked if DCFS should share any of that blame. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. None. I mean, they have a job that they have to do. Whether they did it correctly or poorly, doesn't matter. Uh, parents should not be having fentanyl in their house, should not be dealing fentanyl in the house, should not be living in a trap house with a child. Ard's extended family claims no one told them what was going on inside the boy's home or they would have stepped up and taken him in. They failed his entire family. The story that's been put out into the media is that he was neglected, he was unwanted, um, and, and that's furthest from the truth. He had family members willing and able to step up and step in for him. And that's why I'm so frustrated, and that's why I have been frustrated throughout all of this. While the motion for a new trial was denied today, the judge put off sentencing until next week, and Ard is facing life in prison. Liz? Georgia, thank you.